What if you could discover the origins of the universe through playing a simple and entertaining game similar to Candy Crush? What if by moving around puzzle pieces on a computer screen, you could discover the elusive cure for cancer? Hundreds of thousands of gamers are already participating in life-saving acts such as these, something that is likely to save our entire race in the near future. It was said that the number of people working on protein folding around the world has increased by four times due to games. If this amazing feat has already been achieved, imagine the endless possibilities for the future. However, many people believe that gaming, especially violent gaming, is harmful to people. But in reality, actively gaming is not as harmful as it's thought to be. It can actually be helpful. Rather than violent gaming, there are many other risk factors that cause violent crimes. Two factors to take notice of are lifestyle and childhood, particularly those of foreigners and ours. Many games with violent content sold in the U.S. are also sold in foreign markets. However, the level of violent crime in these foreign markets is considerably lower than that in the U.S., suggesting that influences such as the background of the individual, the availability of guns, and other factors are more relevant to understanding the cause of any particular crime, said the ESA in their article, Essential Facts About Games and Violence. We play the same games as foreigners, but they are influenced differently than us. Our lifestyle and upbringing is culturally different than that of a German, for example. They were taught different things and lived differently than we do, resulting in a different influence. Violent games are not a risk factor. They are but one single thing in an ocean of factors. Similarly, researchers found that structural equation modeling suggested that family violence and innate aggression led to a more increased violence rate than exposure to video game violence, said the ESA. This is a prime example of monkey see, monkey does. Humans learn by mimicking others. If they see many acts of murder, they too will murder. But instead of looking at factors and blaming video games, we should blame a common theme shared between these gaming murders. Untreated mental illness. For what mentally unstable person wouldn't be drawn to violent video games? They give them everything they could ever want, except for a live kill. That is why they take to the streets to hunt for their unfortunate prey. Additionally, an increase in violent behavior in a person that actively plays violent video games has no relation to the games themselves. It was said by Eric Kane, author of Do Games Like Grand Theft Auto V Cause Real World Violence, that if there is truly a direct link between violent video games and violent crimes, we will soon have 18 to 20 million killers on our hands, not to mention the countless millions more who have been playing violent video games for years. This is unspeakably true. For if gamers who play violent video games are influenced by said games and become more violent because of it, we would have legions of criminals on our hands. This type of video game has become so popular that millions upon millions of gamers play them. I know not one person who hasn't at least heard of Call of Duty and the like. If violent games did indeed influence behavior, why haven't we seen these millions of players transform into legions of violent criminals? They would be everywhere, in the alley, standing behind you at the lunch line, sitting at the table next to you at that fancy restaurant you love. However, crime rates show no sign of a great incline. Surprisingly, as video game sales go up, crime rates, rather than increase, tend to decrease. Evan Dashevsky, writer of The Game Room, found that a 1% increase in violent crimes is associated with up to a 0.03 decrease in violent crime. When more people play these violent games, there are fewer and fewer crimes happening. <clears throat> this goes to show that gamers, who are more likely to, make, to commit a crime, take these feelings out in a game. Consequently, they abstain from committing crimes. But rather than video games, couldn't other forms of violent media influence this type of behavior? After all, the ESA confirms that there has been no research to address the question of whether violent video games are more harmful than other forms of media in their article, Essential Facts About Games and Violence. If a child's access to violent video games is restricted, they will turn to other forms of media. There is no telling whether these savage broadcasts will influence violent behavior or not, but with the line of thinking many people already have about video games' horrific influence on people, they'll be sure to think that these, too, influence savage acts. In addition to lowering crime rates, these stereotyped, useless gamers 
have actually helped solve brain numbing problems scientists have been working on for decades. These feats haven't been achieved through scientific research, though. They've been achieved through designing and releasing games for gamers that are fun, but actually help scientists solve their problems. If you think about how much time the average person spends playing games, you'll find that it's a lot. In fact, in an article titled, How Online Gamers Are Solving Scientists' Biggest Problems, the author found that, as a planet, we spend 3 billion hours a week playing online games. If all that intel could be harnessed, scrutinized, and be put to use, we'd have a lot of vital information on our hands. Or should I say scientist hands? In creating games in which gamers could play and, without any scientific thinking whatsoever, solve problems the scientists themselves have asked, they have utilized millions of people's intelligence and used it to determine their scientific mysteries. Take Fold It, for example. It's an online puzzle game that anyone can play in their free time, but there's a catch. The game is not about puzzles. It's about protein folding to resolve a problem that causes an AIDS-like disease in monkeys. By playing this, everyday people like you can make a dent in existing research. The author of the article, how online gamers are solving science's biggest problems found that people playing Folded resolve the structure of an enzyme that causes said disease in monkeys. Scientists have been agonizing over that question for 13 years, but seemingly oblivious gamers had managed to solve it in three weeks. If you think that that was a lot of help, wait until you hear this. Through Folded alone, he, Zoran Popovic, estimates that the number of people working on protein folding around the world has increased by four times in the past two and a half years. Scientists have been struggling to increase their numbers, but when they made a game, poof, more intellect. One argument many people put forward is that kids' fundamental abilities weaken as a result of gaming. However, this argument overlooks the fact that games actually improve analytical ability and reflexes both of which are considered fundamental. In a game such as Call of Duty, players have to analyze the situation and find the best way to escape death and defeat another player, among many things. Over time, this strengthens the mind and its ability to evaluate any situation. This will allow students to analyze situations in academics as well, such as in a subject like reading. If they need to read a text and analyze character and plot, they will be able to analyze the character's actions and decisions more efficiently, leading to higher marks in that class. Another thing players must do in a game like Call of Duty is react quickly in a situation, such as when an enemy is shooting at them. Regularly playing a game like this one continuously puts a player in a position to be attacked in the game, forcing them to react in a timely manner, or receive the consequences and die a virtual death. This helps them in the real world as well, for this type of gaming improves reflexes, allowing a person to react to any situation more quickly and efficiently. For instance, if a ball is flying towards a gamer in gym class, they'll be able to block and avoid injury due to increased reflexes, a result of gaming. Their mind will automatically begin thinking in gaming terms and envision the outcome ahead of time, which spares them the pain of injury, or virtual death as the brain thinks of it. All of these things are fundamental, and improving them is extremely helpful to a person. Actively gaming is in no way harmful to the increasing population of gamers. In fact, it is the exact opposite. At first, I did believe that gaming was more detrimental to people than helpful, but after looking at the surplus of evidence gathered over many years regarding the impact of gaming on people, especially teenagers, I have come to the conclusion that gaming creates an overall positive impact on people in society. Rather than violent gaming, there are many other large risk factors that influence a person to commit violent crimes. An increase in violent behavior in a person that actively plays these so-called savage, brain-numbing video games has no connection to the games themselves. In contrast, gamers have actually helped solve problems scientists have been working on for decades. All of the data gathered by researchers has supported the fact that gaming is in no way harmful. Yet much of society still questions whether it has damaging effects. So next time your child or someone you know picks up a controller and starts playing games, remember that no matter what type of game it is, it helps both them and society in the long run.